Next, I'd like to help, uh, welcome up um, Osama El Sheikh. Uh, so uh, Osama, actually, interesting, uh, someone I ran into relatively recently. He's actually um, you know, a, a professor at BU, uh, done a bunch of WebRC projects, and he also runs a company that does a lot of very really interesting things, uh, remote field collaboration. I don't know if I have much time to get into some of the drone stuff you're doing, but you'll show that a little bit. But uh, really exciting. So I'm, I'm looking forward to his talk. Osama, uh, take everyone. it away. Thank you. First, I just want to mention one thing is like the previous presentation from Colstats is, is really, I encourage everyone to think very deeply about it. It's actually like, it's one of the things that I look on the like weekly basis. One thing I'm proud of is our OQ is more than two for all our participants across the year. So <laughs> that is really nice. I actually look at it. One thing they do too for every call, not only they give you the OQ, you can look at it, scan very fast. It tells you whether it's fair, bad, or good quality, and you can automatically look at it and assess it. And you'll see in my slides, actually quite a bit of it come from looking at the statistics that uh, I religiously follow. <laughs> so. So our company is, uh, in addition to working in BU, before even I worked in BU, this is actually my second startup. The first one I uh, called Packet Video. I was part of the founding team. And uh, it's good to be back here to Google because before Android was even public, I actually was working closely with Andy Rubin and Hiroshi on the Google part and Android. And it was really fun to see it. And actually, it's really uh, cool to see it uh, out there and be back here. Uh, our company, when we built it here, is our goal was is to bring experts and decision making uh, to rural areas and to basically urban areas. Our main goal was how to do media collaboration, how to provide uh, basically decision making, crowdsourcing, and uh, automatic decision making for people in remote area. What our goal was is really we were very societal impact thinking people. My partner and I, she's my fiance and partner in the company at the same time. We wanted to bring healthcare to rural areas and to basically urban areas, and we wanted to bring education. So we built an interactive collaborate tool that you can have live video conferencing, uh, you can have like uh, upload media offline, online, and all the media is automatically decision making done on it, automatically tagged, and you can think of it as a combination with AI, Google Forms, and media all together in one application. I'll see you right now. But as every company, sometimes you have to bow to money, and we did that one in our case. So our first customers, paying customers, were in the telecommunication and construction business. So I'll show you like one of our uh, use cases is here. So basically, uh, whenever you see a tower, actually we always think of them. So this is a tower. Uh, the climber climbs the tower with a phone, and their job is to basically, this is live in our software, uh, their job is basically to install equipment or fix equipment, and they are working with someone in a different area. So they may be in the middle of Nebraska and talking to someone in, in Chicago in live WebRTC communication. Uh, uh, our use case, as you could see, is we are interested in one video back, two-way communication. We are interested in recording the media. We're interested in as good of quality as possible. Moreover, the safety of the user, think of it, the user is up. You know, I talk to people that are 200 feet up in the air. I don't know how they do it. They're up 200 feet in the air, and we have to control their phone for them. Basically, we have to take to enable flash, zoom in, zoom out, do all these combinations. They ha don't have to click on it. They may have it attached to, uh, you know, basically a, a, a selfie stick or in their helmet or uh, basically holding the phone. We don't want them to move. So in this case, we use the data channel to do all this kind of control parts. The reason we use data channel and not WebSocket in this case, because we need to do it as real time as possible. We cannot, uh, you know, like when you are in a mode, in a when you are in that kind of connect, and trust me, when you are next to the tower and uh, you think you have high bandwidth, you don't because you are next to the antenna. There is so much disturbance. You have to have like basically, you know, stand up like this to get like sometimes like the best internet connection from that side. So we have to handle that very well in our case. Uh, another use case while you're looking at the black screen, uh, you all, uh, how many of you watched the Super Bowl this uh, this year? Okay, uh, the uh, Atlanta Mercedes Stadium. So when they were building it, the construction company, 
you, the roof closes, you know, like the roof closes. When it was closing, it was not closing properly. So they basically put all Android phones all around these motors and the hinges. And basically, they put them, and then the engineers from all over were looking at it live. And in our software, you can zoom, take flashes. Moreover, we can uh, take snapshots on the fly that we can do it, and they can annotate and do all these things all together. So actually, very tiny, small contribution to the Super Bowl win. <laughs> So I really want to thank, uh, you know, like, like I mentioned, the, uh, my first exposure to open source and reality was with Android. I was like one of those people that has one foot into uh, open source and two feet, and one step forward, two step backward, because I want to protect our IP at the all time. But when I did WoWPartyC, well, well, it's amazing. Like I'm, I'm just think, telling you how we started this. One of the great people is Moaz Khan. He's actually, how many of you know Moaz Khan or heard of WebRTC parts? He's actually one individual in a small town in Kashmir in Pakistan where he does not have like always electricity. And he is, I consider him one of the best experts of WebRTC out, in, out there. He's really awesome and he helped us early on in, in, in putting this one. We used Corento early on. Our first deployment for testing was with Corento in our system. Actually, Jose and the people in Spain installed it for us. But we ended up after us using Jitsi for many reasons. Uh, we used Jitsi in our system and in production. It's actually uh, one of the nice things is about Jitsi is, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the it's 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 well supported. It has a huge community of support altogether. Uh, they add lots of nice features like peer to peer, uh, all this kind of functionality. At the time, we were considering adding SIP uh, and video telephony, like uh, you guys do. And they actually we integrated it. We used actually Twilio's uh, high uh, high speed, you know, like basically like uh, lines from Twilio into into Jitsi part. But our customers ended up all of them in IP part. But we, we use lots of Jitsi, and it's actually a great uh, project and a great uh, system to use. Uh, like I mentioned to you, uh, WebR2C, cloud recording is important for us, data channel, and, uh, peer, uh, and we are not peer-to-peer. -peer. The reason we are not peer-to-peer -peer is, is literally this. Everyone talked about the SFUs. Basically, like the bandwidth connection from the mobile phone, you don't have high bitrate. You need to basically, like, we need to uh, maximize it. One of the nice features about Jitsi, if you are familiar with it, they have a feature called simulcast. And the simulcast is basically you can send multiple, multiple signals, fr multiple streams from the same unit. And they do it for the Kassam. For example, when you have a small picture and a big picture, you can swap between them. You can choose which one you want to do. We actually disable it because we want to have the mobile phone send only stream, one stream. We, we want to preserve as much stream as possible. That's why the part that we have is this is where the SFU, you send one signal, and then that broadcasts to all, all, all the users that we have. So in our case, most of our use cases is one stream up video, multiple streams audio, uh, one data controls channel going uh, from one presenter to all of them. We have one control of a presenter in our case. Uh, this is, we also did, uh, I'm glad I heard the YouTube discussion is actually, uh, we did similar parallel things because we wanted to integrate in our case, but we did, you have more power to f tell people implement WebRTC in your devices. We had to do RTMP to WebRTC in our case. And uh, we have implemented it, and this is just an example of, uh, I hope this is plays. So, if the audio you hear it here is is actually in this case is a drone okay. flying. Okay, let's go back up and, and Mike, you're going to do it for the lie again, and okay. I'll just we'll just do the whole thing, and that'll give that one was perfect. I just want to back. So it's a small, I put to you a small signal, which is basically we, we were operating within a couple of seconds, like one and a half seconds delay is actually uh, from end to end with the WebRTC part. And, uh, and the drone was flying, and the uh, user of the drone, is the RTMP stream was connected to every user. And at the same time, the phone was also, uh, the user, the pilot is connected via WebRTC to the session communicating directly in our system. And it utilizes all our recording functionalities and all annotations and so forth. So in this case, WebRTC was really powerful. 
I, I really look forward to a time where uh, you know, like many of these devices has a WebRTC SDK we can connect to, and we don't have to worry about this uh, RTMP transcoding, because your points about the TCP, all of them, <laughs> we, we face them. So uh, to go very fast is, Everyone told this, told you this one. Our customers, in our case, are uh, basically business customers. We don't have, we don't go like we are B two B. We provide like tenant base to all our customers. So we have to work with corporations. In corporations, you have to deal with firewalls. Firewalls is a big deal in every corporation. Uh, I think some of uh, you've heard, for example, you know TCP. You know you can go over a TCP versus UDP. The experience is hugely different. A uh, huge difference between them, especially when you go over port 443 and 4443. It's actually you get like delays, you get like basically uh, bad quality, all these kind of things. You people notice it, and actually to to use the OQ, it's actually drops significantly uh, as a subjective quality from, from and, and 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 you notice it quite a bit. So firewalls is very important. Um, uh, the other one is which actually uh, was discussed in call stats, and it's actually the deployment of the SFUs. Uh, when I, so basically like I just to show you that what it is, is uh, the blues are, the servers are the computers, so if you can have one in the South e Southeast Asia, uh, in our, you know, like you have a deployment, uh, any connection that starts with that server, basically all participants join into that server in this case. The same thing in Europe, s same thing in North America. So in this case, uh, as you could see, is uh, you have a global deployment. The reason we did that one is exactly what was discussed with the Colstats people. We saw, um, basically just to give you a rough number here is, uh, in the last quarter, we, we we got quite a bit of traffic coming from Southeast Asia. We basically about 25% of our traffic came there. Uh, however, it doubled. It it more than it more than doubled the call failures with the ice failures just by them coming from uh, Southeast Asia, where our SFUs were in the United States. So we had to deploy them all together. And actually, to be honest with you, uh, the more you see it, sometimes you have to be even closer than. I am in the region. You have to be even closer to the country itself to, 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 to do that. So that's something you need to pay attention to. And that's why uh, you know, like using statistics and tools and these, these things that are, are very important for you to run it. The second thing is what we are looking forward right now, and actually Jitsi is working on it, and, and, and we are big f fans of it, is right now is, for example, if you are starting the call in the US, in, w in, 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 in Europe, and all participants will be in Europe. What if you, so you have a, a multi-country call? So one person is in Europe, one person is in America, one person is in Southeast Asia. How are you gonna round this traffic all together? If you go into one center, into one server, one SFU, you some of them will face delays while other people don't face delays from that one. So this is the idea of cascading that is basically, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the teams in Jitsi and so forth are doing. So this is the option one is like basically someone joins the call. Then, as you could see, the person in the red computer, uh, the red phone will have more delays than the one in the uh, the one. So you have different round, uh, you know, like round trip delays. You can have different ice connections problems and so forth. It will be like I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. It's like I cannot connect. What's happening? You will face these problems. So what we are looking for, uh, hopefully, future uh, in very soon is. Uh, there will be high-speed, basically, connection in the in the back end between the servers themselves, where you basically have the Southeast Asia and then basically like or India or Europe connected to the other servers. So basically, you can you can rely on the cloud provider's high-speed network, and you don't rely on the in, the in in your own connectivity on it. And then you are handling your round trip delays and so forth in a local network. So you can basically do a much better job of it. So that's one of the things that uh, we look into. The last, uh, the last slide which I put in is, is really shout out to Colstats. Anyone that wants to deploy a service, uh, a WebRTC service, I st when you have like only 100, 1,000 users, things are easy. You can look at them and you can manage them. I think the problems comes is when you become, uh, not problems, the interesting, uh, I, I usually call them opportunities to improve. There's nothing called problems. The interesting opportunities to improve is when you start looking at how people use your system when it grows. Regional, browser-based, 
uh, you know, like uh, device-based, all these kind of things. You can sti see them quite a bit, and you can see all the differences and how how they all how they how you deal with them. You see how ice ice failures happen, why they happen, which locations you see like wh what it happens, and you put strategies how to implement them. I really strongly encourage people to look at that one very high. And the other one, just to give you another shout out, that's how I feel good about Colstat is, <laughs> last week, Chrome updated their version to 72, I believe. Was it 72? I think, yeah, it was 72. So when Google uh, updated to sec se 72, they changed some of the SGP uh, issues that was there. Uh, we use a an older version of 72 in our case. Colstat sent us an email and basically, be aware tomorrow is gonna be this. So we panicked for 24 hours and we managed to release it on time. So that is actually like a, a very, my point is like with the WebRTC, it's not only you, it's a community because it's not an easy, I'm not trying to make it difficult. It's a very interesting problem. Uh, there's lots of open source and lots of tools to use. So please, in my opinion, learn from us. We've been doing it for about four years right now with WebRTC. One nice thing is we learned lots from lots of people. Uh, great, you know, like I really shout out for all the open source people, Boris in Web Jitsi, the Corento people, the Janus people, another kind of SFU, uh, Moaz, all these people, the uh, WebRTC hacks. It was, they helped us a lot. Uh, you know, like we are in the uh, two nines, three nines kind of non-call failures. We are in basically like two plus OQ uh, <laughs> thing, so we feel good about it, but I think the road is still long because we still have to do quite a bit of interesting things. So I hope on time or more minutes. Thank you. <laughs> th thank you.